look, I joined the Scrappy Underdog team. I like that environment. And I'll tell you, uh, you know, we got to do a lot of epic shit when I was at DARPA. And it, was, <laughs> it was clear that I wanted to do more of that. And so I'll, I'll tell you a little story of my second interaction with Dennis. It went something like this. He, he said he was very polite. And he said, we've decided to go with somebody from the mobile industry to lead our innovation efforts, somebody who's very experienced in the industry. And this is the basic strategy that we have planned. And I said, uh, really? And he said, yeah, what do you think about that? And I said, I, I think that's a great strategy for not losing and a lousy strategy for winning. And a week later, I had a job. Um, <laughs> Every right but let me down. tell you why. The, the reason is that what that conversation taught me, what it convinced me of, was that this company was serious about that activity, was serious about challenging the status quo and taking their underdog status and turning it into real innovation for the next generation. So I went. We challenge everything, not just about the projects we're doing, but how we're doing innovation. What I told Dennis that day was, Look, the strategy that most companies employ for their breakthrough, breakthrough innovations is decades out of date, and it needs to be updated. It's a World War II linear strategy that goes from basic research to applied research to productization and commercialization, and we need to do it differently. We learned how to do it at DARPA. We're going to bring it to industry, and it's going to have implications for mobile, and it will have cascading implications for the country's competitiveness, too. Let's do it. And what is it? What well, is the what, process? So what we do is we take very um, inspired, uh, technically competent program leads, and we intersect big science with a driving application. That was the cauldron of activity that, was the res that resulted in DARPA from Sputnik's early days. And we said, with that activity, a big science activity and a big driving application, well, you have a really bold initiative, right? And it's counterintuitive to many people because they think with the increased risk that comes with that, you actually yield results less often. But that's not been my experience. In fact, when you take on a really bold vision like that, what happens is you yield results more often, right? If you want to ensure failure in your innovation, try and remove the risk and try and do so by reducing the boldness of the vision. And what you'll get is jack, right? Because what you have are uninspired teams and boredom. And boredom is the enemy of innovation. Boredom is the enemy of innovation. You have brought a couple of things that you're, uh, it, it, it's called. Um, the Advanced Technology and Projects Group, advanced ATAP. Te your advanced technology yep. team that, that uh, uh, Dennis hired you wisely, by the way, to do. <laughs> uh, you have brought a couple of things that you're working on. And can you talk about them? Can you show them and talk sure. about them? Sure, sure. Well, you know, lots of people talk about innovation in this space as if the big innovations have already happened. I just, I think that's a lack of imagination, frankly. There are so many unsolved problems, and there are so many opportunities that can be realized by the advances in the tech here. So let's just take one really important problem, one driving application, in this case, authentication. Authentication is irritating. In fact, it's so irritating only about half the people do it. Right? Despite the fact that there's a lot of information about you on your smartphone, which makes you far more prone to identity theft than if you didn't otherwise have it there. Right? So, so you're talking about passwords and pins and sure. the drawing patterns and uh, on well, Android? Well, sure. Look, and... after 40 years of advances in computation, we're still authenticating basically the same way we did years ago. In fact, it's gotten worse, because now you don't do it once a day or twice a day, the average user does it 39 times a day, and it takes them 2.3 seconds every time they do it. Power users would do it up to 100 times a day. So what are we doing about that? Well, we're thinking of a whole variety of options for how you could do better at authentication. So you can start with nearer-term things like uh, tokens or fobs that might have NFC or Bluetooth embedded in them, but you can also think about a means of authentication that you could simply wear on your skin every day for a week at a time, say an electronic tattoo. Now, we're talking about wearables. Everybody's interested in wearables. I'm profoundly interested in wearables. <laughs> 
And what I, what I will tell you is that there are some, we've made a lot of advances in wearables, but there's still some fundamental problems that we haven't solved. Like one of them is the mechanical mismatch between humans and electronics, right? So electronics are boxy and rigid, humans are curvy and soft. That's a mechanical mismatch problem. Well, a researcher at the University of Illinois, his name is Dr. Rogers, what he discovered is that he could use standard CMOS techniques to make islands of high-performance silicon connected by accordion-like structures that would allow it to stretch up to 200% and still be performing. And what he did is he founded a company and they started making electronic tattoos. So I, I'm wearing one here on my arm. Do we, do we have here. a camera to get a... This is a, develop, this is a developmental system made by MC10, and it has uh, an antenna and some sensors embedded in it. And what we plan to do is work with them to advance a tattoo that could be used for authentication. Now, it may be true that 10 to 20-year-olds don't want to wear a watch on their wrist, but you can be sure that they'll be far more interested in wearing an electronic tattoo, if only to piss off their parents. <laughs> right? And that can have a design, right? Because sure. they would certainly want some kind of cool design. Options, right? options. And that's something that you wear, but you could also imagine including authentication in just your daily habits. So I take a vitamin every morning. What if I could take vitamin authentication? What? Vitamin authentication. Look, I have one right here. Well, here, I'll let you hold it. Mm. Would you like to hold it? I'll hold it. OK. <laughs> so this, you guys see it? this pill has a small chip inside of it with a switch. It also has what amounts to an inside-out potato battery. When really you small. swallow it, the acids in your stomach serve as the electrolyte, That's what do. and they power it up, and the switch goes on and off. And it creates an 18-bit ECG-like signal in your body, and essentially your entire body becomes your authentication token. Yes, this is true. Okay. Okay, but. Okay, so wait. But, but, so it's uh, it's really true. So what this means is that that becomes my first superpower. I really want this superpower. It means that my arms are like wires, my hands are like alligator clips. When I touch my phone, my computer, my door, my car, I'm authenticated in. First superpower. Like I want that. So so we're not shipping that right away. Yeah. No. <laughs> we're not shipping that right but, away. But it but sounds is it, like. Is it? This is FDA clear. So here's the thing. This. This is not science fiction. This pill was actually made by a company called Proteus, and they've developed it for medical applications. That pill has been CE stamped and cleared by the FDA. You can take 30 of those per day for the rest of your life. And then what happens? Does your heart Nothing. beat change? Does your <laughs> we can just tell that you've you taken the pill. I mean, the medical application. Yeah. The medical application. Does Google is now know everything I do and <laughs> everywhere I go? Because <laughs> yeah. let's face it. Here, we, we like just, you guys, but you're from Google. Just give him some water and let him take so, that so pill I, right now. Thanks. Maybe, maybe Dennis. Dennis, let me ask you. Does Larry make you take one of these? <laughs> it's optional. So, so it's we, optional. Uh, so we actually have demoed this working and authenticating a phone. Yeah. So this isn't like totally. It actually does authenticate. And again, this well, isn't, there's a lot this of work isn't, to do, yeah. This isn't stuff that's going to ship anytime soon, but I think having... The, the boldness to think differently about problems that everybody has every day is really important for Motorola now. Yeah. And there's a lot of people now, again, we're trying to get the company in that mindset to think big again. Um, and it's early, but we're excited about where it's going.